Honestly, for anyone curious to know what is going to make you blow up, make a viral video, you know, what did Janelle Eliana do that can work for anyone? It's gonna sound really, really weird, but I almost think you're limiting yourself by finding a niche off the bat. <laughs> Yo, 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 what's up guys? My name is Jade and welcome to my channel. I'm so excited that you're here. Before we begin today's Ask a Jade show, I want to quickly shout out to everyone who RSVP'd already for my Los Angeles meetup. If you're a creator and you want to grow your brand, network with like-minded people, I can't wait to meet you. So make sure you go sign up. All right, let's start with the first caller. What my first question was like, would you consider industry plants a bad thing for creators as a whole is any sense sorry yeah no you're good i mean like here's the thing the weird okay. thing is like industry plants aren't anything new right like lady gaga i think to answer your yeah. question i think what's polluting if anything what's going to pollute um not the industry plants but just entire economy would be if people started to not okay if, if like generally fans got smarter and can see through industry plants and stop following them yeah. i think that's when it can get mm -hmm. scary because then there's no one being loyal to anyone because people are too paranoid yeah i don't think it's a bad thing at least for now it kind of reminds me of the whole claro situation oh claro like yeah her family like is in the industry so obviously she had help she wasn't homegrown did she but, say like, she's homegrown? Does Clara like proclaim she's homegrown? Well, she was. She's like bedroom pop. It's, it could be true, but the thing is, though, she obviously has people that are helping her. The number one thing you can get, get away from if, like, if it's a plant, is if they're super formulaic. For example, you know, like when you're a young kid, you have like ugly ass pictures on your Instagram. Like, if they yeah. start out like fresh, aesthetic as fuck, it's like a little bit weird that they didn't like have the homegrown roots. Or for example, like if Clara had her branding so perfect where she's bedroom pop since day one, I mean, it's a little weird. Like they, they almost have a formula because like, for example, Janelle will only make a van video and it seems like she, she got it off the spot. Like she just knew, you know what I mean? Like they, if they're educated about what they're doing, they could, you could consider them a plant. Yeah. But like, honestly, in that case, by definition, there's way more plants than we realize. Like David Dobrik, like he has a formula, four minutes, 20 yeah. seconds. Mm -hmm. Like, so then we're getting a little yeah. too far, I feel like, because then everyone's a plant. Yeah. <laughs> if everyone's a plant, there's really no such thing as a plant if everybody is a plant. Yeah, so we're just like, a lot of people are like accusing Janelle. She might just be a regular human that's just smart. <laughs> I'm just yeah. giving her shit. <laughs> What's your name and where are you from? Uh, I'm Dean and I'm from California. Right now, I'm kind of struggling on figuring out a niche for myself because I feel like I should have one, but I have so many different ideas that fall under so many different categories that I don't know how to narrow it down. What, like, what, what makes you want to find a niche? I, a lot of the things that I've seen like online, they talk about how when you're starting to create content, that if you have a niche, it'll be easier to reach an audience because you have a target audience. Yeah. Okay, what would you say if I gave you advice to almost post whatever you wanted and not give a shit about in the very beginning finding a niche? What would you say if I gave you advice about that? Would that make sense? It would be like, nah, Jay, you don't know what you're talking about. It does make sense. Do you, do you find that you're preventing, you're almost not posting at all or as much because you're afraid of screwing up your niche and you're like filtering yourself at some point? Yeah. Kind of. And name a YouTuber you like, and then maybe what they're posting. Like YouTuber like is um, Chris Yu. I always like to do this, but if you look at her first like ten videos, I always like to see like your favorite YouTubers. Like, did they have a niche typically? And if you look at her first ten videos, it's like a vlog. It was procrastinating. It was healthy eating. I don't know. If, do, do you think there was a first, like a she had a niche in mind in the very beginning? Not really. No. So yep. so why did you say she's a lifestyle YouTuber if she, like she's always kind of changing her content? Just when I like think like generally what her channel is, then like that's what comes in mind. So it's her personality. She's very like organized and kind of like mindful, right? What happens is like finding a niche for me is limiting because what makes you you is your, your personality, not necessarily your title or the keywords you use because like Chris has, let's be honest, Chris does not have a channel with like a perfect niche, like maybe Janelle Eliana, right? Hers is like organic to who she is. So that's why in the beginning, very beginning, you almost like, I don't know, the people, honestly, the people who are saying find a niche are probably super miserable because I've been there where like I had to make a content because like the keyword was good. And honestly, you feel dead as f 
Like you get depressed. So honestly, I know you hear a lot of nice, but like if you generally ask them if they're happy making that content, they're gonna say I'm depressed because no one likes being in a box, right? Um, yeah. You don't like finding a niche because it makes you feel like you're suffocated. So I would say in the beginning, create freely and see where it takes you because you don't know what's gonna happen after anyways. Is that helpful, Dean? <laughs> you're an angel for letting me record this and act through. You definitely heard me talk about this before. <laughs> Yeah, lately I've just been kind of like bouncing back and forth with ideas in my head. But I think like with your advice, I'm just going to create them and then yeah. see how Yeah, so, so you have a list of video ideas, right? I'm assuming? Yeah, I do. I have make like a list and like a checklist. Dude, so, literally, yeah. I want you to do this. Once a week, you post once a week, right? Yeah. Pull from the list, edit, film, create. Pull from the list, right. edit, no, no overthinking because it's going to limit to you. Like how do you know what's going to work if you don't try it? So yeah. do that for the next week and we'll put your channel below to keep you accountable. Okay. All right, thanks, Dean. So now we're here, and I'm gonna quickly make a snack. All right, so thank you, Dean, for letting me call you up and talk a little bit of YouTube struggles. I feel like, honestly, for anyone curious to know what is going to make you blow up, make a viral video, you know, what did Janelle and Leona do that can work for anyone? If you guys don't have a snack, honestly, what are you doing? Like, grab a snack. I really wanna leave off with this one important note. You know, I think we can look at Janelle Eliana's growth, you know, 2 million subscribers in a month. We can look at Janelle's success, right? And we see that she found her niche. She found her, you know, branding of being a girl that lives in the van. You know, she's almost iconic. And I feel like we are trying to shortcut that process and replicate it. When in reality, if you try to find your niche so fast, try to find your, your you know, series, who you are, you're basically leaving a lot of possibilities on the table. How do you know you're not going to want to do lifestyle videos if you don't try beauty? How do you know if you're not going to be more successful on certain things? So that's why in the very beginning, if you just have like 10 videos, you're not fine. You're not like you don't know who you are yet until you start A-B testing everything in your, in your imagination. I think too many people do something called premature optimization. And what premature optimization is, is basically before you even find what works, you're trying to make everything perfect. A good example of this is, for example, if you can't even edit a video on your phone and you're gonna try to like buy the most expensive camera ever. Start somewhere, you haven't even took your first steps. Um, it's like a baby trying to run when they can't even walk. I think we each always try to like do everything as fast as possible, but in reality, you need to take your first step. So honestly, I think most people aren't ready to find their niche because what a niche basically does to you is limits who you are to figure out your branding. And I'm going to be honest, guys, if you talk to any artist in the music industry that has their branding, like Ariana Grande or Miley Cyrus or anyone you look up to, and you ask them like genuinely, how do you feel that your management is giving you song lyrics? Or how do you feel that your presence online is in a certain view? They're gonna say I'm depressed as fuck because you can see every single Disney star rebel out of their mold and shell that like Disney gives them because they feel out of place and it's not who they are. I think so often we're glamorizing the process of finding a niche when honestly it's one of the saddest things. You lose your freedom. And I know I'm being dramatic as fuck for saying this, but I just believe that why are we trying to optimize and like essentially copy and paste what works to find our niche when creating is about expressing who we are and being authentic to ourselves like unless you want to be an industry plant then i would say find and trust everything in your entire um, capabilities and then find what's your favorite video out of that. For example, say you post beauty, lifestyle, fashion, health, you know, everything possible. Then, you know, a year later you look back, like what was my favorite? What do I want to do now? Um, you don't want to marry the first person you date, right? It's like you want to try things new. So in a weird, 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 weird way, fuck a niche. This is the recipe, guys. You take the spread of the love almond butter. You guys know that I am obsessed with this. I eat this again like 40 million times a day. So all I do for my snack is I apply some almond butter to a rice cake. ASMR. I use a lot because this is really good. <laughs> and then we want to add some banana. Actually, I know the founder of the company that is the nut butters, and her name is Val. She's amazing. Just an amazing entrepreneur and female founder. So I'm gonna link below if you guys wanna check out Spread the Love. They have the best peanut butter and nut butters ever and um, I'm obsessed. So let's show them some love and a Spread the Love.
Mm -mm -mm. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I actually have a meeting to run to and I'm running late. So I'm gonna catch up with you guys very soon. Go come to Swipe Up LA, go subscribe to this channel, like this video, and shout out to the comp winner. Shout out to the comp winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you wanna be the next comp winner, all you gotta do is comment below and I'll catch you guys in the next one very soon. See ya.